Welcome back. Now we're going to take a look at doing uh, metal that's a little more stylized than the simple brush metal that we did. Uh, this would be something you'd tend to see more in games or in, as a backdrop in web development if you're looking for something kind of grungy, things like that. So once again, I've got a 1024 document. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick uh, just a grayish blue in here somewhere, a little bit dark. Somewhere in there. What do we got? 39, 49, 4F. That'll work. I'm going to go ahead and fill that. And I'm going to create a new document. And then I'm going to create another one. This one, I'm going to name Dark. And this one I'm going to name Light. The dark I'm going to set on multiply and the light I'm going to set on screen. Then I'm going to come over to my color palette and instead of my hue I'm going to switch to my values and for my light which is what I have selected right now I'm going to push this way up And for my dark, I'm going to bring it way down. Basically, so that these two, oops, that was a silly way to do it. Reset my light one. There we go. Basically, I want these two colors to be on the opposite end of the spectrum from my base color. So we're good to go. Now, with my dark, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my regular brush and I'll grab something soft. I'm going to come in. This is a good brush because it doesn't really have anything going on right now. I'm going to bring my spacing up. Maybe a little bit because I'm not really going to drag. I'm just going to do a lot of clicking. Add a little hardness. I am going to add one thing to this. I'm going to add wet edges. We bring the size up. You can see that it gives us a lot of detail going on in here. Then on my dark layer, I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush. I am going to bring my opacity way down because I don't want this going nuts. So somewhere around a third. And it's going to look terrible at first. That's all right. I'm going to kind of play around in the middle. Maybe do a little dragging. And maybe change up some settings on my boss brush. Bring the spacing back together. Push the hardness a little more. Just to get a little bit different. And I'm going to work on this middle. Then I'm going to offset it. Now we have 1024, so an offset of 512. You see it kind of covers in these edges. And I'll go back to painting in the middle. Just kind of fill all this in. I'm not trying to get a real even covering. In fact, I don't want a real even covering. I want a kind of mess. my filter again. If you didn't see that I uh, accidentally just bumped this and hurried up and clicked repeating that. And there we go. All right, now I've got this uh, kind of splotchiness going. I'm going to switch to my light layer. And I'm going to switch to my light color. And I'm going to start doing it again. Ooh, I got uh, this opacity I'm really going to bring down. Yeah, around 16 maybe. There we go. And I'm going to look for these areas that are kind of already light.
And again, it, the more we do this, the more it's going to look like some kind of like microscopic, microscopic view of an alien bloodstream or something. It's it's going to look like a mess. Don't worry about that. I'll just keep working it. I'll go ahead and offset Control F to repeat that. I'll start working this middle. This area is really lit up, so we'll push that a little. Same over here. Just so we get something kind of weird. What we're really doing right now is just creating color information. Something to catch the eye. Control F. Let's see, we got a little spot here. We need to offset that. Alright, now, let's see what happens when we take our opacity on these way down. There we go. Alright, so we've got some good color information going, and we can play around with where we want the opacity. really jumped. Just to have something visually appealing. And the great thing is, since we did these on separate layers, we can play with this forever once we've saved out this file and get things that we like. Alright, now let's do another layer. And I'm going to reset back to my black and white by hitting D. I'm going to go ahead and fill this layer with black. I'm going to go up and I'm going to run clouds. All right, not bad. Let's put this through a few filters and see what we come up with here. All right, we've got this one, which is uh, chalk and charcoal, which is one I really like for this. We can look around and see what else we have going on. Uh, maybe reticulation might be something you want to play with. Uh, what else we have here? Notepaper could maybe do some interesting things. Uh, as we get further into this, I'll try to remember to come back and mention this one. That can be good. Uh, charcoal is a whole lot of nothing. Graphic pen might be interesting. In fact, uh, I think we can go ahead and give that a try. Uh, overlay maybe, soft light maybe, bring our opacity way down again. There we go, that's got some kind of interesting stuff going on. And once again, we're still looking at this and going, uh, yeah, I don't really see metal. That's okay. As we've discussed before, uh, when you start out, it's going to look kind of nasty. And also, if we wanted a photo reel picture of metal, we could just go get a photo of metal and be fine. So we're trying to sell an idea here, and we'll see that come together. All right, let's see. What should we do with this? Let's uh, go ahead and create another new layer. And rather than having uh, two separate layers, uh, well, actually, let's, uh, let's do what we've done before and take this fill all the way down. And let's set up some layer style on it some bevel and emboss. Uh, size about five, soften off. I want these to be sharp edges. Depth up around 300% I think. But we're going to be kind of guessing and I want down. Actually I think I'm going to knock this down to about 200%. Click OK. And we'll go ahead and grab a brush. This time I want a good hard brush. I want my spacing all the way at 1%, my hardness all the way up. And I'm going to bring the size way down. Yeah, maybe not one. We'll try two pixels. See what we get. Uh, shape dynamics. Uh, they don't really have anything going in there anyway, but 
We'll turn that off. And we'll see what we get. And I'm just going to uh I'm just going to kind of go a little basically side to side, a little counter to this grain that we set up. And I don't appear to be getting much of anything. Let's see what we got here. Maybe we All right, for just a second I'm going to make this big and All right, it's showing up. You probably can't see it. And let's see what we can do to make this a little... St oh, I know. Never mind. Silly, silly me. Let's bring this back down to two. I had my brush opacity way, way down. So guess what? Nothing shows up. Let's bring that back up. See, we all screw up. There we go. That's looking a little better. All right. It's showing up, but I'm not loving it. I'm not loving it. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here. Because that line's a little rougher than I'd like. If your line looks rough, and you can certainly make it a lot rougher than it is, that's a good way to go if you're trying to do, like, worn concrete or something like that. All right, spacing zone, that's all the way up. So let's take a look at our layer style. And I think I'm going to I'm going to make oh, that's not the one I want. I think I'm going to make this uh, chisel hard. And I think I'm going to bring that depth down to uh, maybe 150. Now we can do a hundred. No, I like 150. But I'm going to bring my size down to 4. That's a little bit better. We get a little bit cleaner line. Alright, and then I'm just going to kind of mess this up. Now, invest a little time here. For the sake of this recording, I'm going pretty fast. But I want this to look like worn scratch metal. And a little goes a long, long way. I'm also doing a lot more of this than I probably would with a regular texture. Just so it'll be more visible in the recording. Alright, we've got some scratches going. I'm going to start putting in some damage scratches. That go counterintuitive to the grain. There we go. Stuff like that. It's not too bad. It's coming along all right. So far I'm happy with that. I would like a little more information in this though. So I'm going to come down to uh, the layer we did down here. I'm going to add another new layer. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create some uh, going to create some clouds. And maybe go in and play around with a few more filters and see what we get. I do kind of like the, the chalk and charcoal. And as you can see, I mean, there's different things to try all the time to see what you get. I don't like the rough pastels. It's kind of a cool effect, but I don't like the actual texture. Splatter might not be bad. Let's give that a try. I'm at, uh, let's call it 20 and 4. See what we get here. And what do I have this one set to? Soft light. We can try soft light again. Adds a little bit more information. Hmm. 
Oops, that's uh, color dodge. It's kind of starting to get an interesting effect. Color dodge lighten up our color quite a bit, so it's pretty easy to uh, jump between a really old metal texture and a relatively new one. I think that's pretty good. Alright, we're coming up on 16 minutes, so I'm going to pause the video here and pick it up in the next one. And we'll take a look at how we can sell this idea better and how we can go from maybe a metal texture to using our base and creating kind of a stone texture. I'll see you in that video.